In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to do titrations, which is the way a way of finding the concentration of an unknown solution by reacting it with a known solution. Uh, so what we're doing is we're looking for uh, something to change. So with acids and bases, we use acid-base indicators, which change color dramatically from being in one pH to another. And we hope that that happens at the stoichiometric, what's called the equivalence point, where we've actually added the amount that stoichiometry demands. So if it's like a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, we've added that. Uh, but in reality, that the best we can do is to be able to see the endpoint at which point the indicator turns, and hopefully the endpoint and the equivalence point are near enough to each other that we know that we have the right amounts. Okay, so the endpoint is what we actually see. The equivalence point is what we want uh, that endpoint to be near. So in practice, what this is, is let's say I don't know how many moles of an acid I have down in this container here, and I know the concentration of the base that's up here above. So as I add base, once I get to a certain point, let's say after I've added th three units of base, then that what the end point would be is that the indicator inside the flask should change color, um, but it's not letting me change the color of that. Let me just shade that in. Okay, so once the color changes happen, then I know, hey, if I added three um, units of base, and if it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry between the base and the acid, then there must have been three units of acid in there. So again, I can tell how they're related by seeing what it takes to get the reaction to go complete to completion. What a problem in, for this uh, would look like is here, so this is kind of our standard problem, is I have a certain volume of an unknown um, acid, and I put that in Erlenmeyer, and I add my indicator. After I add a known amount of base, I want to know then what is the concentration of the acetic acid. And so what I do first is I find out how many moles of base did I add. And of course, moles is molarity times volume. So in this case, that would equal 0 0.029 liters from up above here, that 29 milliliters, times 0 0.1 moles per liter. So that's 0 0.0029 moles. Okay. Once I have the moles of the base, if it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, in this case it would be because NaOH has just one OH, and the acetic acid, the HC2H3O2 I start with, has just one H. So I would just take one of each of those. So it's one-to-one -one stoichiometry. That means my I know my moles of base added equals the moles of acid originally present. So now I can find out what the concentration of my acid originally was, which equals moles divided by volume. So I can take my 0 0.0029 moles and divide it by the 0 0.050 liters that I started with. And that will give me the concentration of the acetic acid. Um, I'll then be demonstrating this for you in lab as well. For um, doing this, we use what are called burettes. And burettes allow you to add um, a solution very precisely so you can add it down to just like a single drop at a time and then you can measure the volume of that single drop okay uh, for this lab we'll be doing mostly strong acid versus strong base or strong acid versus weak base um, that's type so I'm going to fill the burette up with base like what we'll be doing in lab okay uh, then I'm going to select which acid I'm using this thing has kind of gone off to the side here Maybe I gotta switch this over. Alright, so we'll use base KOH. 
and we don't know so it tells us what the molarity of the base is what the volume of the base is it's a little bit backwards usually you put the unknown down here I'm um, down there and up here goes the unknown okay boy I think I'm just gonna have to demonstrate this in class the simulation is not working the way it's supposed to be I don't know why okay um, another way of looking at uh, acid-base titrations, in addition, it can get you a little bit more information than just looking at what, where the indicator turns color is by graphing out what the pH is versus the volume you've added. And so what happens if you're doing this, where if I start with an acid uh, down in the flask and a base up in the burette, my pH will start really low and then as I add more and more base it'll increase but it doesn't increase very quickly at first but then all of a sudden it will jump up and then it'll level off again and as I keep going it might have another jump and then level off again depending on how many for an acid like this where it has just one H on the front it would just have one jump. If I get a graph like this that has two jumps, then I know um, it has actually would have two H's on the front. So for a graph like this, it would be H2A, not just HA. So I've got my initial, whoop, I guess I didn't need to draw this in, they're already there. So initially my pH is low. I'm just gonna erase my lines here, okay. So initially your pH starts low in this type, and then before you get to what your equivalence point or endpoint is, your pH is basically level. As you go through the equivalence point, there's a sudden jump, and also your stuff in your flask turns color, and then after equivalence point, then it will level off again. So this is kind of what the graph looks like. Some other important things, what then? So at the equivalence point, when you're halfway up this jump, this volume added then is becomes the really important volume of that tells you what the volume at your equivalence point is. Kind of another mark is when you're halfway to the volume at the equivalence point. What's special about that is your pH is related to your Ka of your acid or we could say the pH equals the pKa, and the pKa would just be the negative log of the Ka. So we can actually tell, if we have a graph of like this, we can tell a lot about our acid, because we can tell does it have one proton on it or two. We can use the pH at this level spot to be able to figure out what the Ka of our acid is, and that can be really useful information for trying to identify what acid we have, and that's actually one of the labs uh, that we're going to do. Okay, so a titration again can tell you a lot more than just an indicator. It can tell you if it's a strong or weak acid. So if it's a strong acid that you're titrating, then your equivalence point will happen at a pH of 7. For a weak acid, the equivalence point, so that middle jump, if I go back to the graph here, depending on what pH you're at when you're right here, if that's above 7, then you must have been using a weak acid instead of a strong acid. Uh, you can tell if it's monoprotic or diprotic, again, having 1H or 2Hs in front by how many jumps it takes. So if your graph looks like this, you know it's monoprotic. If you have two jumps like that, then you know it's diprotic. Okay, um, And then again, you can get the pKa. So having that graph can tell you a lot of information. And we're going to be doing the titrations um, both ways. Okay, um, let's see. I don't think we're going to worry about calculating pH at the end point uh, this year. Okay, so again, hopefully that's enough just to introduce. We'll go over some example problems, and tomorrow we'll also look at what a, an actual titration looks like in lab since I couldn't get the simulation to work. I might throw up a, a video um, link also to somebody doing this if I can find a decent one.